All right, integrated three students. This is going to be our final lesson, uh, potentially for the semester. I'm pretty sure that it will be. And uh, we're talking about graphing exponential functions. So let's go ahead and get it going. All right, so I have uh, graphed a function here. Let me make sure that this is easy to see here. Uh, this is an exponential function. Okay, and right now I have all these sliders on Desmo, so this is going to help us understand the graph aspects of a exponential function. What I have graphed currently is 2 to the x. So down here you can see the green is going to overlap just because of all the parts. Okay, um, so what I'd like you guys to start, uh, start with is in your notes draw a line and then write this up here, graphing exponential functions. And what I have here is the general form of an exponential function. What we actually uh, did for one of our assignments in uh, Delta Math was we practiced writing up exponential functions just a times b to the x. But we're gonna be talking a little bit about transformations in this, uh, in this video as well. And then uh, we'll do some examples using uh, Desmos, but also uh, we'll use the TI-80 series calculator here um, for some Delta Math problems. Okay, so we'll be we'll be getting to some Delta Math examples. That's the last problems that you have on there, which is due on uh, the 11th. No, excuse me, the 10th is when this is all due. Okay, so. Um, you should write this down, uh, a times b to the x minus k plus c. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about what every single part of this is doing. Okay, so first off, we talk about a, and we wanna know what type of transformation is occurring if, uh, if we start messing with a. So I have the original here, the green. So I wanna know what's happening as I change a from this. So green is where it originally was, and I'll even uh, make that sort of checkered so that we can see what it what it once was and you'll notice if a is negative it starts going down if a is positive it goes up okay so in as far as a transformation is concerned this is what we'd call reflection and uh, in in our polynomials unit we would call this value the concavity right so if it's negative it, it's opening down or it's reflected across the x-axis but also what happens if I here it is at, at 1 if I increase that what's happening is it's getting stretched vertically and if I get lower it starts uh, compressing till it's flat and then it goes the other direction so it sort of has that aspect of stretching and compressing uh, we won't worry about that too much but I will say that this is concavity uh, we'll say stretch vertical stretch and compression what that a value is actually doing uh, so uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later when we do an example now let's go to B B is a very important one B is extremely important so we'll, we'll go back to Desmos here and uh, we're going to make this uh, a is going to be one again so we're back to 2x now what happens with b look at that it's increasing that rate of of uh of this function as it's going from left to right it's going up i need to actually change this value let's make this a let's make this five excuse me negative one i want to make my steps different okay so we can see this change and I have this on a pretty small scale as we increase it's going up watch what happens as I as it gets closer to one and then finally we get less than one it flips you can see this cool little it does like its own little dance here compared to what it was if I go to half you'll notice it's sort of like reflected across this horizontal axis that's not necessarily the transformation that is occurring um, but this B value doesn't really, it is changing it if we do end up changing B value, but we're gonna talk more specifically about this. Um, and look, when it's negative, it goes away. So we can't really graph a negative of this. But when it's, you'll notice we have this function here, which seems to be going up on the right side. And then we have it here at this point, it's going down on the right side. So 
these the difference between these you you would have learned about these imath uh, imath one is uh, this is growth at this point this is a growth function and then this one is decay once we get to this point so what are the rules for that well you'll notice we'll write these down when when b is greater than one then the function shows growth. Okay, so when B is greater than one, we're seeing growth and, and that's what's happening here. So right now it is less than one and we are going to change it to be greater than one. And then it, anything, whenever it's greater than one, it shows growth, okay? And the higher number it goes, the faster it's growing. Then what's our rule for decay? Well, when does it start flipping here? Okay, now it's decay, but okay, at negative it goes away. So we can't, we're not having a negative amount here for our growth. So the rule for this is you'll notice it's always going to be decay, but when it's one, it just stays flat line, but then it becomes growth. So it's always decay when it's between zero and one. So we're going to write that. So we want. <clears throat> When um, B is greater than zero but less than one, then the function shows decay. That's what that B value is there for. Whatever it is, um, we know that tells us if it's a growth or decay function. Okay. All right, let's talk about C. Let's talk about the transformation that's occurring with C, and then we'll start working some problems. So let me put this B value back to two. Okay. Check out what this does. Let's move C. C is right now zero. So let's watch it as I increase it. Okay, that's moving it. It seems like it's going up, right? And then going the other way. Yeah, making it a negative makes it go down. So what we should be thinking here for C is we have a vertical shift by we'll say up or down by c units okay now there's also another rule that we want to talk about i, I want to show this i'm going to make another function i'm going to say y equals c that's what we want let me make this a dotted line here uh dash is fun let me get rid of this one so watch you'll see this blue line this is the um, it's going to cross the y-axis at whatever value c is. So you can see that's 2.1 there, and then all you have c over here is 2.1. And you'll notice that this line is approaching it, which right now it's 3.5. Let me make it a 4. This line is always approaching 4. Look at the y value. It's getting closer and closer, but it's actually never going to make it. Now, Desmos has issues with rounding, so it's going to eventually, like it'll show on Desmos, yeah, there it's on there. See, so watch, uh, still didn't get there. But it, it actually is never going to touch this line, this blue dashed line, okay? So we have a name for this. Um, so we're gonna add to this, we're gonna say, we're gonna add this word, asymptote, okay? This should be a new term for, for most of you. My, uh, the one class that I taught face to face, they had never heard of it before, but you're going, if you take pre-calculus next year, Miss Star and Miss Mansfield, this is a super important concept. And uh, and you're going to hear this again. So what is the what is an asymptote? Well, here is a picture description of what an asymptote is. It is a line that a curve approaches. You're gonna write this in your notes, I'll copy it, but a line that a curve approaches as it heads towards infinity. Okay, so we're gonna all we're gonna paste this in here. And there's our note for that. You need to make sure that you write that down. A line that a curve approaches as it heads towards infinity. Um, so if you need to pause it, make sure you do that or rewind and come back and get it. But I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the Desmos and we can see that happening. I'm gonna zoom way out here. Line is approaching that. Now, what if I made this a decay function? You'll notice that it's always gonna be balanced around that line because this horse, this uh, asymptote is always going to be equal to C. So that's important to uh, to remember 
uh, when you're when you're working through the delta math that the asymptote is always going to be equal to c okay now exponential functions so let's uh let's talk about let's go in here a little bit uh, more and talk about this different types so there's three different types you don't need to write this but you have horizontal vertical and oblique asymptotes uh, vertical asymptotes you'll talk about in pre-cal when you take pre-cal eventually uh, that's what uh, that will be what we have for exponentials are always horizontal okay so we're gonna add that to our notes uh, exponential functions and I look at how I spelled exponential good grief always have horizontal asymptotes the asymptote is y equals c so it is a horizontal line, so it's y equals, so it's a, it is a linear um, a, a function of a line there, y equals c. So that's gonna be very important for the delta math, okay? And we'll work on that in a second. Okay, so we have, we've defined this idea of c. I think for, for you guys, that's one of the most important parts of this is, uh, is knowing that. Let's talk about this final value, k. What's it doing? Okay, and then we're gonna work some problems and we'll be done pretty pretty soon uh, with this. So let's go to K. My mic there. All right, uh, I'm gonna keep this, uh, asim we'll keep this one and let me move this back down. C goes back down to zero. We have everything back to normal, so the green line. So let's watch what K does. Okay, K is, it looks like another translation. Okay, that's what it looks like from there. Um, we said this was a vertical shift. Let me call it a translation is the type there. And you'll notice with K that it is a horizontal translation, okay? Let me make K a plus if we're adding it, okay? And let's see what happens. You'll notice as I add a positive value, it goes to the left. If I go minus, if I add a negative, it goes to the right. So that's a pretty good representation of what this actually does. So we're gonna we're gonna add that to our notes. K is a horizontal translation shift. There we go. Let's add some some pointers here. If it's adding, it shifts to the left which is sort of opposite you always think addition is going to the right but we've 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 experienced this already this year and we hopefully remember that and then if we're ne negative we do shift to the right so they're, they're opposite of what you might think let's go back to the desmos to, pr to show this if i'm putting if i'm going more negative adding a negative number or really what that is is subtraction i'm going to the left if i add i'm going to the to the Excuse me, I'm going to the right if I subtract, I'm going to the left if I add. That's the rule there, okay? And that's gonna be the basics for what we need to know about graphing, okay? That's what we wanna know. So now it's delta math time. So I'm going to put this over here and we're going to look at the delta math section. So you guys have six questions to answer with this and I'm going to find some examples uh, here's the first problem, but we're going to find some others. This one is called, we have log functions in here too, but that's not going to be until next uh, semester when we get to that. So let's do, hmm, let me find one that I, that I want to do here with you guys. No logs. No. Come on, give me a more difficult one. This one's great. Okay, so here we have our function. I can't really model that over here though, so hold on. I wanna find, I'm looking for one specific that's gonna be the easiest for me to do. This is fine. Okay, so um, over here, I'm going to create this on here, okay? So I need my A term to be negative three. Okay, so there's, there that is. I need B to be one half, so we're gonna do that. All right, there it is. Then I need my, my K term to be uh, four. 
There we go. We have our graph over here. That's going to be step one. We're going to have to graph these. So I'm going to do this on the 80 series as well. Now, here's the part that, um, that gets a little tricky. First off, the asymptote, which is what we define, is always for these exponentials, which is all you're going to have for this delta math, always going to be horizontal. Okay? Always horizontal. So once you figure out the asymptote, you're going to have to plot it. We'll get to that in a second. We have to plot points with whole number coordinates. So what that means is we need a table. So to get a table on Desmos, we're going to click this gear right here and of course hit the table and then we need whole value coordinates. So if I type in a three, four and I keep hitting enter, you can see the points appearing on here, but none of them have whole value coordinates. So we're probably not going to get any unless we go in the negative direction. So I need to type in negative, uh, let's do negative three. I still don't have one. Negative four. That's the first time I get a point that works. Let's do negative five. Okay, so I have two points here, negative four, negative five. We have all these values here that are showing up. So we wanna recreate those on delta mass. So watch how this works. I'm gonna take one point, I'm gonna put it at negative five, negative six. And then I'm gonna take negative four, negative three, right here, I think I've got that right. And then the last thing you have to do is you're gonna click on this asymptote here and you can drag it. Well, where is our asymptote? Remember, it's equal to C. Well, what's C on this problem? C is zero, so I'm going to have to put uh, this on the x-axis. And then if I hit submit, it gives, I get it correct, okay? Let me find another problem equally as difficult and we'll do it on the um, on the 80 series. Let's do this one here. So here we go. If you're using the 80 series, you'll go to your y equals on here. We're going to start typing this in. You have to hit the negative two. I'm going to use parentheses for this. I figured out how to make a fraction on here, by the way. I don't know if uh, if y'all figured this out or if I found another way to show it. If you hit alpha y equals, the number one here actually makes a fraction, which is super handy. And then we can close this and we're going to raise it to the x plus 4. I'm going to go down. I'm going to hit plus 8. And we're going to graph that so we can get an image of what it what it looks like. Can I not see it? Oh, there it is. My graph's so slow. It's crazy. All right, so we have our graph and we know what it should look like. First things first, we know that it's going to have a horizontal asymptote. We need to find two points that are whole numbers to plot this thing. So we're gonna hit second, and we need to go to our table. So second graph goes to our table. And then what we're looking for, these values won't work. We can't have repeats, because if I put them there at two, or let's say five, four, eight, the four, eight, and five, eight, it's pretty much just gonna make a line and we don't want that. So that's not gonna work, we can't use that. So back over here, we wanna go up and find the values that are whole numbers, and we will eventually find them. There they are. So you should see them there. So negative four, six, negative four, positive six, and negative five, negative two. Okay, negative five, negative two. There we go, so right now it doesn't look anything like our graph, but what is our horizontal asymptote? Well, it's eight. So C is eight this time, positive eight. So we're gonna go up here, eight, and we did it. We have the graph that matches. We're gonna hit submit. There we go. That's all we need to know for this. Uh, you have six questions to do. This is gonna be due, uh, today is the ninth, so this is due tomorrow on the 10th, all right? So I'll stop this video.